He cannot do that to us anymore when we know what Jesus did for us on the cross. He destroyed sin's power over us. We are no longer identified by our failure and our sin. We are identified in Christ Jesus. Now look at these wonderful scriptures down here. Ephesians 1, 3, and 4 again. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm because we are united with Jesus. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. What creates shame? Your faults, your failure. In Christ, you are without fault. In Christ, you've been made holy. Now listen to this, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Christ did no wrong thing, but for our sake, God put the blame for our wrong behavior on Christ. So now God sees us as somebody. God sees us as good. Why? Because we are in Christ. The power of sin has been broken off of you. The power of sin has been broken off of you. The power of sin is to tell you you're no good. The power of sin is to tell you you're not good enough. The power of sin is to tell you you lack. Jesus destroyed the power of sin by telling you you are perfect without fault in my sight forever. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 14 says with one sacrifice, Jesus made us perfect today, yesterday, no, Forever, forever, the power of sin has been broken off of your life because of what Jesus did to redeem us and bring us back to this state of complete and utter approval in Christ, complete acceptance in Christ, without fault in Christ. How can that be when we have so many faults? I don't know. I'm just going to believe it. If the word of God says it, if my heavenly father says, Connie, I approve of you completely. You are excellent in every way. You are good, so very good. Because of your faith in my son Jesus, I'm going to say thank you, Father. I'm going to live in his love. And when I fail, I'm going to turn back to him. I'm going to receive his good opinion of me. I'm going to say, Lord, forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. You still say I'm good. You still say I'm approved. You still, because you said you made me perfect forever. You made me perfect forever. And shame is broken off of you. Shame is broken off of you. You... Shame is broken off of you. You don't have to live in shame. Your father approves of you. There is no lack. There is unconditional love. Unconditional love has nothing to do with your behavior. Has nothing to do with how you look, what you've done, your performance. It has everything to do with who you are. You are God's child. You are God's, the object of your father's affection. And the scripture says in Romans 5, 8, and 9, even when you were a sinner, God proved his love for you by sending Jesus to die for you. When we didn't deserve it, we don't deserve to be called perfect and wonderful and good because we've all been bad and not wonderful. That's why it's called grace. He gave us something so special, a gift of love, his approval in Christ. God proved his love for us by the fact that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. We are now justified, verse 9 says. 
made righteous, acquitted in Christ. Our Father loved us so much, ladies and men. He loved us so much that he did not leave us in our sin. He broke sin's power by making us righteous in him. We are complete in Jesus. <laughs> and if you read your Bible study this week, you read it in Colossians 2, 9, and 10. It says, through your union with Christ, you've been made complete. You've been made complete. You don't lack anything. And the one lie the enemy is constantly trying to tell us is you are not who God says you are. You're not complete. You lack. You're not valuable. You weren't productive today. You're not valuable. You don't make enough money. You're not valuable. They don't want you. You're not valuable. Constantly, the one lie the devil is constantly trying to get us all to accept. It sums up all the three lies. What God says isn't true. You're not who God says you are. You lack in some way. You're not who God says you are. You need to fix yourself. You're not who God says you are. Constantly, the devil is trying to tell us we are not who God says we are. Every lie. And I want you to, I want you to just really be aware of this. Be aware of this from this. I mean, I'm so aware of it. I have read these first three days a hundred times, probably not that many, but I have read them a lot. Over and over and over I'm reading it, and I'm just saying, Lord, I see this. I see it. I see it so clearly. The devil is trying to tell me constantly. Now that I see it from the Word of God, I, I see it in my life. He's constantly, the circumstances of my life or somebody says something, and this little thing is, is that true? And I have to decide, is what my father says is true or is what they said true? I constantly am having to say, just the other day, I got to tell you a little funny story. I was feeling a little overwhelmed, had a lot to do, sitting in my chair, and I was just having to take a few deep breaths. Have you ever been there? <laughs> okay, Lord. I was feeling a little frustrated, a little, um, my mind what didn't seem to be working like it should, you know. I felt scatterbrained. And the devil comes, you are so inadequate. True. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm sitting there feeling very inadequate. So in inadequate that when I was <laughs> when I was putting a Bible study in an envelope to mail it, um, I got it all packaged and ready to go. And then I was looking for my Bible study, and I could not find it anywhere. Where did I put my Bible study? I was like, Lord, I can't find my Bible study. I had written it, and I'd made notes, and I can't lose my Bible study. What did I do in this mess of all I've been trying to do? What did I do with my Bible study? And the Lord said, you put it in the package. Oh my goodness, I put that in the package. I was going to mail somebody my notes. <laughs> so I took another deep breath, and <laughs> the devil, did God really say you have the mind of Christ? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he did. He just gave me the mind of Christ. He just told me where my Bible study was. So there, devil. Isn't that good? But constantly, in my life, and I'm a positive in yours, the devil is trying to get us to take on our own opinion or somebody else's opinion of ourselves rather than God's. Our heart is made whole and complete. We live loved and live free when we take on the Father's opinion of us. And we say, Father, I know you love me, and what you say about me is true. The devil tries to tell us we can't do it. You're not who God says you are. What does God say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The devil tries to tell you your needs aren't going to get met. You're not who God says you are. What does God say? I'll meet all your needs according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The devil tries to say 
You're inadequate. You're not who God says you are. God says that he's equipped us with everything we need to carry out his will. See, every, every lie. Your children are going to go off into the world. You're not who God says you are. My children are disciples of the Lord. He's got a hold on them. I don't care what they say, what they do, who tries to influence them. God's spirit and his word are not departing from my children because that's what God says about me. But the devil wants me to believe, you didn't teach them very good. Look at what they're doing over there. You're just lacking big time as a mom. As a mom. No, no. My father says that I'm good, so very good. And my father says that my children are mighty and blessed upon this earth. And my father says he approves of me completely. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? The devil's constantly trying to tell you what? You're not who God says you are. Every lie is rooted in that lie. And wholeness and healing in our hearts comes when we turn to Jesus and we say, Father, what you say about me is true. Did God really say that you're valuable, the devil will say? You're not valuable. Nobody needs you. You're not productive. I mean, have you ever had that happen? You feel like you wasted your whole day and then all of a sudden you feel bad about yourself. Why? Because you found your value and how productive you were that day. Yeah. You're discouraged and you feel bad about yourself and shame enters your heart because you didn't get everything done that you thought you should get done. You're finding your value. I've done it. I'm telling you this because I've done it. You're finding your value in how much you got done that day. Somebody didn't invite you to a party. Man, I'm, something must be wrong with me. They don't even invite me. Finding your value and whether or not somebody invites you to their, their party. My children didn't call me for a week. Finding my value and whether or not my children need me or not. And what does it do when I do that? It creates brokenness and sadness in my heart because I'm looking outside of Jesus to meet the need that only he can meet. Did God really say that you are valuable because Jesus paid a great price? Yes, he did. That's what you need to say. You lack in some way. Is the devil coming at you again? No, I'm complete in Christ. You need to do something to fix yourself. If you're a little bit more productive, then you'd be valuable. No, I'm valuable right where I am, right where I stand. My father loves me, and I'm valuable in him. And let me tell you something, ladies. When you begin to live like that, that's living loved, that's living free. Your heart becomes whole. All of a sudden, your depression and your discouragement and your, and your anxiousness turns to peace and joy and confidence and security. Woo! We can live free. The power of sin has been broken off of us. Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. The devil is a liar and he's a father of lies. And he's constantly telling you, you're not who God says you are. And what are we going to say? Yes, I am. I am exactly what my father says I am. In Christ, I am holy and perfect in him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where am I? <laughs> Have I taught the whole Bible study yet? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. What's the one lie the devil's trying to tell us? What is it? You're not who God says you are. What is the one truth that'll set you free? <laughs> Say it louder. I am who God says I am. I am who my father says I am. I am complete in him. There are two ways to live. And that's on page, if you want to look at it. Page 22, there are two ways to live. And before I, before I look at that little illustration, I want to read the scripture, Ephesians. I love this passage of scripture in Ephesians 1, 11 through 14. It is in Christ that you find out who you are and what you are living for. Long before we first 
heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. It's in Christ that you, once you heard the truth and believed it, found yourself home free. Once you heard the truth, that you're approved and loved and accepted and blessed and favored in Christ, and you believed it, you were home free. Woohoo! Signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. This signet from God is the first installment on what's coming, a reminder that we'll get everything God has planned for us, a praising and glorious life. That is what our Father has for us, a glorious life, a heart whole, a heart complete in Him. Thank you, Jesus. So there's two ways to live. And I've lived in both ways, and I don't re recommend one. <laughs> living unloved. You're either living unloved or you're living loved. Okay. You're living unloved or you're living loved. <laughs> Right? You're living this way when you're thinking I lack in some way. When you've taken on your negative opinion of yourself. When you feel incomplete. When you feel like you lack. Your heart is saying I'm not who God says I am. Is what God says about me really true? I'm not sure. Do you really love me, Lord? How could you love me? Look at what I've done. Look how many mistakes I've made. How could you love me? And shame and brokenness is working in your heart, and you live a broken-hearted person. And I know it because I live there. Or you can come over here, and you can live loved. And you can say, Father, everything you say about me is true. Not what anyone else, if anyone else says something that's not what you say, Father, I know that's a lie because what you say about me is true. And I am loved and I am approved and I am accepted in you. I know you love me, Father. I'm complete in you. What does that do to your heart when you just allow the truth just to go deep within you? Peace and joy and freedom reigns when you live in the Father's love. Thank you, Jesus. So one more thing I'm going to share with you, and then I'm going to close. And it's in your Bible study, and if you did it, you already know this, but I'm going to share it again. I asked the Lord one day, Lord, how do I live in this love? Because I realize that this life that I long for, this life of fullness and completeness that is found in you is found in living loved by you. How do I learn to live loved? How do I learn to live this way? I've been living this way for so long. How do I learn to live in here, in, in, in a place of freedom? And I heard him speak to me that day, these three words, ask, listen, respond, very quickly to my heart. And I'm like, Ask, listen, respond. Lord, show me what you're saying. And he took me to these scriptures in the Bible. Ask, listen, respond. Do you want to live loved? Do you want to live free? Ask. The scriptures say in, in uh, Ephesians 1, 16, 18, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. I keep asking that the eyes of my understanding will be enlightened. I, Connie, keep asking that I would know the truth that would set me free. Jesus said, ask and keep on asking. And then in James 4, 2, he says, you do not have because you do not ask. So many times, and I know I've said this many times, and I'm going to say it again, we look to someone else to teach us the truth. And then we end up confused, and we end up in, in deception because the truth is within you. Jesus lives within you. 
you come to Bible study with Jesus on the inside of you. So when I speak, you know immediately whether I'm saying the truth or whether I'm saying a lie. You know it because God lives in you. Don't look to me. Look to Jesus. Come to Bible study. Come to church. Jesus, you're going to speak to me today. You're going to tell me the truth. You're going to show me the truth. I love to listen. And I love to go to church. And I love to go to Bible study and I, because God speaks to my heart. But I'm always going with this anticipation in my heart. I'm not going to listen to him. I'm going to listen to God. Speak to me. Jesus, I'm asking you. Show me the truth. Help me to see. I want to live loved. I want to live free. Ask, ladies. Ask Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Father. Ask that you might receive and your joy will be full. Ask for a revelation of his love. Don't just look to man to teach you. Your life will change forever. Listen. Don't stop with asking. It's time to listen. I love listen. Listen is where it all, this is so exciting. Listen. Proverbs 4, 20 through 40, I'm sorry, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. God says, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them, healing and health to your whole body. My child, pay attention to what I say. I love that. Pay attention to what I say. Let my words penetrate deep within your heart, for they will bring life to you. The Zoe, God kind of life, God's word. That's why in any situation that I find myself in, when the enemy's coming at me or negative circumstances around me or somebody has said something negative, I always say, Lord, show me the truth. What do you say? What do you say, Lord? Just yesterday, I was driving in the car with my husband, and he told me something somebody said about his business, and it was negative. Immediately, in the moment, I said, Lord, show me the truth again. What do you say? And he says, Connie, I say my plan is to prosper you and to give you hope and to give you a future. That's what I say. See, listen, Connie, listen, my child, listen closely to what I'm saying. I say my plan is to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. So I sit there and I let that penetrate into the very facets of my heart by saying, Father, you love you say your plan is to prosper me and to give me hope and a future. That's responding. That's responding. Ask, listen, respond. The scriptures say, listen to the words of the wise. Apply your mind to what he says. Father, this is what you say. Do you know what happened to my heart as I sat in the car? thinking upon, Father, you love me. Your plan is to prosper me, to give me a hope and a future. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Is what they say true? No. What the King of kings and the Lord of lords and my Father God says about Connie and her husband and her children and her family is what's true. And I'm going to let it penetrate. What does that mean? Sit there. Let it go deep within your soul. Father, you love me. Your plan is to prosper me, to give me a hope and a future. You love me. My completeness is found in you. I'm secure in you. And my heart becomes full and alive and peace that passes all understanding, envelops me, and I say, honey, what God says is what's going to happen in our lives. Amen. Ask. You want to live free? You want to live loved? Ask in the moment. 
Lord, show me the truth. What do you say, Lord, about this situation right here that I'm facing? Listen for a moment, ladies, because he'll speak. And when he speaks, think about what he's saying. Respond to him. Yes, Lord, you're right. What you say is right. What you say is true. I'm going to live loved, Lord. I want to live loved. Help me to trust you with all of my heart. And that's how you live loved and live free. Are you tired? Trying to live up to some expectation, trying to be good enough, trying to be righteous enough, trying to be the good Christian. And it's just a painful place to stay because your heart tells you you're not good enough. Are you worn out? It's constantly, I need to do more, I need to do more, I need to do more, I'm not doing enough, I'm not, I don't have enough faith. I, you know, it's constantly about you. And you lose sight of Jesus. Jesus is like, where'd he go? Are you burned out on religion? It's all about what you need to do. All about how you need to make yourself better. Do you feel like you never measure up? This study is not going to be about what you need to do. It's going to be about what Jesus has done for you. Join Connie as she introduces you to the Proverbs 31 woman that Jesus has already made you to be. Order Because of Jesus Bible Study DVDs, CDs, or packages today at ConnieWitter.com or call 918-994-6500 where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. Because of Jesus Ministries introduces our first children's storybook, Are You a Chicken Head? by Connie Witter. This fun little book asks the big life question, what's true about you? Mommy, that girl called me a chicken head. Is that true, Victoria? Are you a chicken head? What does Jesus say about you? For many years, I have shared this true story to encourage others to believe what Jesus says about them. I pray this book will inspire parents, grandparents, and children alike to confidently respond. I believe what Jesus says about me. Order this delightful book today at ConnieWitter.com or call 918-994-6500 where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. If you have been blessed by today's message, we invite you to partner with us. Your monthly gift will make it possible for more people to hear the true gospel of grace. Call the number on your screen right now or visit ConnieWitter.com to sign up as a partner today. Together, we can make a difference and see precious lives transformed and live free in the Father's love. Because of Jesus Ministries is your resource for grace-filled, Jesus-focused Bible studies and curriculum for all ages. Adult Bible studies, books, devotionals for girls and teens, DVDs, CDs, and MP3s. We offer group Bible study packages as well. Connect with us and check out our many free resources online at ConnieWitter.com. Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus.